Hello, YouTube friends! Breakman79 here, and welcome back to Let's Play Planescape Torment. Ah, in our last episode, we were given the uh, task of thrusting the uh, knife into the back of one Mr. Black Rose, who we have yet to be able to locate. Ah, uh, he could be in here. Why don't we take a look, shall we? Ah, it's not him, but we have somebody else. Let's see what his deal is. Aloha. Or almost aloha. <laughs> Welcome. No, wait a minute. This guy needs a... What kind of voice should we give him? Hmm. Welcome to the Cathedral of Asukar. Have you... No, that sounds terrible. Welcome to the Cathedral of Asukar. Have you come to worship Asukar with me? You can be his second disciple. Why are there no other disciples of Asukar? Well, over the years I've had many disciples. Unfortunately, they have all disappeared. It's quite frustrating, actually. As soon as they become initiates, I never see them again. Lately, there has been a rumor going around that the lady herself is the cause. No one comes by anymore. You are the first soul I've seen stop by in a long while. Oh, I'm not afraid. I want to become a disciple of Asukar. Wonderful. It's been so long since the last person asked. Aloha makes you perform a series of complex rituals and then says, You are now a disciple of Asukar. Go now and spread the word to the denizens of Sigil, so that all may know the glory of Asukar. Well, farewell to you, friend. All hail Asokar. All right. What do we have in this box? We have absolutely nothing. Okay. So, Mr. Black Rose does not appear to be here, and I don't believe our journal says anything about him. Nope. Only that he needs to be dead. The sooner the better. Ooh, some coins. I'll take that. Cool. Alright, let's get out of here. Uh-oh. Hmm. Can't be good. What am I doing here? Ah. Um. I don't know what you're doing here, buddy. Where are we? Where's everyone else? Done. Player's maze. Interesting. All right. Can't go up there. All right. I'm gone. Okay. We got. Something looks like a, right. a no dead end. I'm gone. Ah, okay. Seriously, is a maze. All right, let's um Done. head back to the middle here. Hmm. Let's try Done. this direction. Done. There was... Nope. Dead end up there. Done. Oh, okay, these are connected. <laughs> I'm gone. So I'm guessing we got mazed by the Lady of I'm Pain. Gone. Are we going to meet Ravel in here? No, probably not. Right. This is probably... Nameless One's own personal hell. What are these I'm things? Gone. Whoa! Okay. Um, I'm they're gone. teleporters. All right. Where am I? Oh wow. That looks like a dead end down there. Indeed. Um. All right. How about up here? All right. All right. 
eventually... Oh. Okay. Okay. Let's try another one of these um, teleporters. Or, oh, we have several of them. I'm gone. All right. I like that ends. Um, which one did we come out of? This one or this one? Let's try this topmost one here. Okay, in we go. Hmm. All right. Done. Done. That might connect over there. All right. Let's see. Try to expose as much. Indeed, it does connect. All right. So be it. There is a pile of crap over here. How does one get over there? One of these portals. Now, if we go back through the same portal, are we going to end up where we were before or somewhere different? Same portal. Okay. Cool. Because, you know, randomness All right. makes things more complicated. Now let's just... Nothing there. All right. Keep on going. Hmm... How much of the map have we exp Oh my goodness, there is a ton of these things. If we can get over there... Oh. Okay. I can get there right now. Let's check out that garbage up there. Maybe it's got something useful. Or maybe it's just a pile of trash. I mean, there's like half skeleton right there. This looks like a pile of firewood. Sledgehammer. Strange feather. Ah. Oh. Now, the problem. Hmm. Tongs. I mean, I should have offloaded this stuff. Okay, cool. It's got a little bit of space saved up. These we were just going to sell. Room key. I want to hold on to that. Maybe I can just. Dr ditch these things now. I mean, in, is there a purpose for me ever going back to that tomb? Junk. Grimoire. Clot charm. Right. Same with the identify. Yep. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Ha 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 ha. Whoops. Magic missile. All right. Oh well, I don't plan on dying anytime soon, so I don't think we're gonna need it. Okay, so. With that out of the way. What? Okay, put that up there. That there. I 
Okay. Good. Made some space. Done. Okay, that's good. I don't know what this will do. I suppose we can sell these things. We'll hold on to them for the moment. Let's check out the uh, feather first. What? Fragile breakable. What? This feather is ash gray, fading to black around the edges. It is much larger, th larger than a bird feather, and it creates an unpleasant tingling sensation when held for more than a minute. Examination of the feather reveals that it is a feather from a Vrock, one of the many races of Tanari that fill the abyss. The Vrock resembles huge vultures, and they are often used as scouts for the Tanari forces in the Blood War. This particular feather is believed to have been taken from a Vrock shaman, who is reported to have died by simply disbelieving himself, possessed of a certain mental imbalance and with an odious habit of devouring his followers to gain strength, this barmy Vrock was rumored to be capable of causing others of his flock to behave erratically, much more so than for a normal Tanari. He convinced many of his flock to tear off their wings and make up and take up bor <laughs> burrowing in the ground. Other times, he preached the virtues of honesty as being more evil and destructive than any lie. When he disintegrated, only the feather was left behind as a testament to his feathered existence. Some of the shaman's residue is believed to reside in this chaos feather. The chaos feather, when used in combat as a dagger, inflicts a minor amount of damage, about the same as a conventional dagger, and has the power to confuse any target it strikes. Creatures struck by the feather may be stunned, run away, or attack their allies. Most Tanari consider the feather to be a sacred object. Vrox will kill anyone possessing it in order to retrieve it. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Bone Frame Journal. This appears to be some sort of journal. Sheets of dried human skin have been stretched across a framework of bone, and strangely enough, it appears the sheets of skin have healed together at the seams, forming the spine of a makeshift book. It looks like the outer sheets of skin form a cover for a series of other skin sheets locked inside the bone frame. A series of symbols have been written in blood across the exterior of the sheets of skin, but you can't make them out. They appear to be some form of writing, and they seem to be written upside down, right to left, and at odd angles that make your eyes hurt. Despite the crudity of the writing, you have to admit the design of the bone frame is actually quite intricate. The bones have been carved so that they snap neatly together. It looks like the bones can be unhooked from each other, allowing the book to be opened and read. Is it me, or did I just find the Necronomicon? <laughs> Make sure you say the right words, buddy. Uh-huh. Examine the exterior. Ah, uh, yes, we already examined the skin. The skin looks to be the same pallor as yours. Its scarred gray surface reminds you of a zombie's hide, and the pages feel more like cured leather than skin. Examine the frame. Despite the crudity of the writing, you have to admit the design of the bone frame is actually quite intricate. The bones have been carved so that they snap neatly together. It looks like the bones can be unhooked from another, allowing the book to be opened. Okay. Unlock it. You unlock the bone frame, which unfolds with a neat snap. You open the book and study the pages. They are filled with the same strange series of symbols as were on the exterior cover, and they don't seem to make any sense. Well, let's try to puzzle it out, shall we? The symbols don't seem to follow any pattern, at least any that you can see. The angles in the pictures displayed seem to be completely arbitrary, but you can't be absolutely sure. I'll well, try again. Uh, can't see again and again and again hmm am I not intelligent enough 
Or is this the writing of a madman? No. Okay. Leave it alone. As you rehook the bone frame, you are suddenly struck with a strange thought that the pages of the interior aren't supposed to make any sense. You, whoever you were at the time, put the symbols there to deceive anyone looking from reading the real contents, which are hidden somewhere else in the journal frame. Oh, okay. We wrote this ourselves. Examine the bone frame. You examine the edge of the frame and you notice that one of the bones has a hairline fracture around one of its ends. You put your hand over the edge and twist off the top of the bone, revealing a hollow space. Inside the space is a small, rolled up scrap of skin. Well, of course, pull it out and read it. This scrap of skin is covered in writing. It looks like someone kept writing over it again and again, until it is almost ill illegible. Nonetheless, you can make out some of the words and some of the symbols. Trapped. Trapped. Lady's will will be done. Dodge her gaze. Too many I killed. Too many stra strangle. And kill and stop the breath in their throats. There's a way out. I know it. Then I'll give the bladed one the laugh. Bladed one. Hmm. One of the arches holds the way out. One of them does. One has the way out. Can't just keep going through them one at a time. Maybe, maybe I should go through one, then walk back to the same portal without... The entry trails off into indecipherable scrawls. For some reason you have a feeling that was the last entry. Either the incarnation died in the maze or escaped somehow. Updated Put it away. Journal. Done. Hmm. All right. Have we seen all of them? I suppose we can just try that. I'm gone. I'm gone. Okay. Go right back in. No change. Okay. I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. No change there either. Alright, we need to go to this one. Done. I'm gone. Uh, Alright. I'm gone. They keep on doing it? Hmm. Okay. All right. Poof. It's just putting me on the opposite side, isn't it? Interesting. I'm gone. No, we want to go in this one. Done. I assume it's going to put me directly right. north of here. And indeed it did. See, are there any inconsistencies on this map? See, here's a problem. Where is this one going to take me? Actually, how do you get over there? That's its corresponding one, but it's been destroyed. Well... Eh. Alright. No way there. No way there. There's no way to get to that one.
Unless I'm... I don't see anything. I'm gone. Hmm. There to there, there to there, there to there. That one to that one, that one to that one, that one to that one. Well. Ah! Well, he can't hurt me there. How am I gonna get out of here? Let's try some things. Okay, that's what I expected. All right. Done. This one? missing here. Oh yeah, the keys. It's not like I can fix it or something, can I? Let's see, what does my journal say? <laughs> Whoever I was when I wrote this, I was definitely a few stones short of a portal. I'm gone. All right. Too bad my um done. I mean, what? No. Uh, ladies will be done dodge your gaze. I'm trying to see if there's any other clues in here. It says one of the arches holds the way out. Maybe I should go through one, then walk back to the same portal without... What if it means, um... Like, to go through one, pop out on the other side, and then walk all the way back across and go through it again. Let's see, is there, are there any ones that we can actually do that with? So... These two you can get from the center. That one you can get there. So it's like this one and this one here? Let's try it. Well, is it the only one? Let me see, can these... That one we can't get to. That one drops us up there. Can't get to the middle. I think it's just these two. All right, let's let's try that.
Okay, in we go. Oh, crap. Nope. Do not want, do not want. Oh yeah, look at that, it's still activated. Ha ha ha. Come on, buddy, you can get there. You can do it. Alright, let's see what happens. Done. Da 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 da! Done. I really do not like that noise. Uh, quick save. Done. Oh yeah, look, way out. Yeah! No! Sweet! Sup, guys? Picked up some new toys there. Had to drop off some keys, though. Um, We really need to sell this crap I've been collecting. Lower ward. Hey, you can't go selling my little buddy. Interesting you should bring that up, because just the other day I was asking them how much they pay for you. Hmm. That's too good for you, skull. <laughs> I'm gone. Town person. Okay, where are we? Ah, yes, the market. Done. Ah, it's always open. Okay, let's sell some crap. Oh. Wait, can I give that to, um... Can he learn it? Oh, he has it too. How about the identify spell? Spell has been added to my teachings. Hmm, okay. I suppose we could also give the armor scroll to Ignis here. Spell has been added to my memories. Oh jeez, that voice. <laughs> okay. Guess we're not gonna be selling that. Okay, we have a sledgehammer. Seriously? Oh, I can't even sell it to him. Oh, it hasn't been identified yet. I don't think I have any identif- maybe one. Indeed? Okay, I got one. How do I use it? Okay. Enchanted. Some weapons I cannot use. Can I sell it to you now? Still can't sell it to you. All right. I just... okay. Let's try Anzi over here. Okay, he's got some weapons. Ooh, that's nice.
Bone dagger. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to be needing it. I hope this is the right move. Only 106. Not worth anything. It's worth a pretty penny right there. Hmm. Okay. Biting ring is 800. Do I have more than one hammer? Oh, forge hammer. Chanted battle axe. Cell. Enchanted hammer. Cranium rat charm. Evoke strength. I don't think we need it. Just sell it. Morty, what are you carrying? Hmm, he won't take that. How disappointing. Needle and thread. Another one of these. I don't think I need to be collecting this crap. Okay. Drop it. Drop it. Did we ever find a use for these things? Hmm. This was the um, magic user guy, right? Yeah. Hmm. Kind of cold. I think I forgot to actually look through this guy's um, repertoire down here. Hammer. Here's those punch daggers. Oh, I did. Never mind. What did this guy sell? Merchant of Magic. Oh, just like little trinkets. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Whoops. Armor class. Thieves. Wait, what is this? 25 resistance to all normal attacks, plus 10 hit points. Hmm. Resistance to magic is pretty nice. We can always try to go up against the um, Cranium Rat King thing. That would be useful since it's pretty much all it uses on you is magic attacks. Uh, what do we got? Displacer. Plus two to armor class. Mm. 
There's that. Sadistic frame? Oh. When you use this item causes an attacker to feel the same pain and hurt that has inflicted upon the user. I wonder if you can only use it one time. Very expensive for a one use item. Or maybe a couple of use item. Oh, he's gonna be the one that I can sell like the crap to. No. Man, I can't sell anything. Ammonium. Okay, so we're still trying to find that, um... Yeah, the one we need to off. Hmm, he's in the hive somewhere. Could he be hiding around? He could basically be anywhere. There's also the tattoo guy we can take a look at. Oh, that guy. I don't recall talking with her. Oh. Never mind. All right. Probably did talk to her at one point. Hive dweller. All right. Crazy guy. This is one of Fell's studios, is it not? I have long wanted to meet him. Oh well, you're gonna get the chance now. Are you daft? We'll draw the lady's case if we stay here. We will. Hmm. Actually, you know, there was something funny um, in the notes about the uh, bladed one. I wonder if they're referring to Dakon here. What is your will? There are things I would know, Dakon. Hmm, I wanted to ask you about our travels? No. Questions about the Githzeri? Did he ever teach me how to speak their language? I have a feeling he did, but... Oh. Blade. Rank. No, I think we've all looked through this before. Teachings? Haven't we finished this? I've read the Unbroken Circle of Zerthamon. Yeah, of course. I don't think I can look at his, um, thing anymore, right? Is there a ninth level? No. Or at least not that I know of. Bladed one. <laughs> Anna does not like fell. Anna, what's wrong? 
Arya daft. Anna turns to you and then suddenly realizes she's frightened. Arya so pig eager to dance in the lady's shadow, he'll brandy words with this one. Let's give this place the laugh before we get penned in the dead book. It's a problem. It's fell. Anna throws a fearful glance at the creature. Presumably fell. Let's be away. I no good will come up being here, so it won't. I ask again, what's the problem? He's a Davos who's not a Davos, I. He walks on the ground. Anna's voice drops to a whisper and she starts trembling. No more questions. Let's give this place the laugh, I. Anna, no harm will come to you while I'm here. Now tell me what's wrong. Anna throws a frightened glance at Fel. Fel's a Davos who angered her. It said he's a Davos who isn't a Davos in the times close when the lady's gaze will follow him, so it will. Her? You mean the Lady of Pain? Aye, and heed her your tongue. Anna makes another semicircle in the air in front of her as you mention the lady's name. The Davos work for the lady and she protects them, except Fel. She shudders. Let's be away, I. We need to speak to Fel first. Anna grabs your arm. Please, nay, nay, no good will come of it. Anyone speaking to Fel could draw the lady's gaze. I don't know. Don't I want to die? I don't. To your surprise, Anna looks close to tears. Let's promise her, Anna. No harm will come to you while I'm here. I promise. I just want to speak to him for a moment. For a minute, Anna just looks at you. Then something in your gaze seems to calm her, for she steals herself. I don't know why I... She shakes her head. Go on then, talk to him. I don't care. There's an undercurrent of fear in her voice. Very well. The Davos waits patiently, its hands tucked into its sleeves. A series of symbols materialize above its head, then dissipate, and a question mark appears. I'm pretty sure I can speak to him now, right? Questions. Hmm. Fell, do you know of Ravel? There's a long moment of visual silence. It drags out so long that at first you wonder if Fell heard you. Then a few symbols, strangely gray colored, appear sluggishly above his head. She is not a myth. Where is she? A series of gray symbols swirl about Fell's head like a slow moving whirlpool, then flatten themselves out in a bizarre twisting pattern. She is one of the lady's mazes. Yes. Mazes. The next series of symbols march out like a train of slaves carrying a heavy load. Her will was not the will of the lady. Ravel was punished. Ravel was imprisoned in a maze. Do you know how I can reach this maze? Another stream of Rebusu's trail out from Fell, but these float lower, as if they are carrying a heavy weight. I do not know how she might be found. She should not be found. She is in the lady's keeping. There is a hard edge to the texture of the symbols in the last sentence, reminding you of dagger blades. What can you tell me about her? A white oval appears beside Fell, then a sharp crack appears in it. Instinctively, you recognize the oval as a symbol for the city sigil itself. She sought to open the cage. Okay, other questions. Oh, before you can change the subject, a new series of symbols appears around Fell. The structure is that of an X, and they pulse like a weak heartbeat. Do not seek her out. Within, within her beats an evil heart. She will do everything in her power to hurt you. I guess I'll keep that in mind. Hmm. 
Hmm, what are those frames in the back room, Phil? A caravan train assembles slowly materialized around Phil, one by one. It is my gallery. Yo, your discarded skins are my canvas. I admire you. I am saddened for you. Saddened for me? Why? Another caravan of symbols forms around Fell, this time forming a circle. The mark of torment lies upon your flesh. Tragedies and loss have built themselves upon it, like stones upon a foundation. You have endured great pain. What do you mean? A long string of rabies appear above Fell's head, then surround his arms like manacles. I admire you because you have never surrendered to the weight of these losses, despite the fact that their chains hang on you still. Go on. A long string of rabies appear above Hell's, Fell's head, then falls, covering him like a cloak. These losses blanket this life and all of your past ones. You shed lives like a molting serpent. You are exploring the infinite paths of life. More. A long stream of rabies appear above Hell's head, then suddenly fall to the floor, streaming out behind him like a shadow. Take with you this warning. Each of your lives casts a shadow on existence. You must travel to a place where these shadows have gone mad, and regrets have scarred the earth. Anything else? A brief series of paper-thin rabies appear in an orderly row next to Fell, then vanish into glowing motes. Do not sign anything. Hmm. Very well. Another series of rabies appear, forming a spiral. They have the texture of a question about them. Do you feel complete? Truth. I don't. In fact, ever since I woke up in the mortuary, I feel like something's missing. Something inside. Fell nods, and a series of symbols materialize in a halo around him. You are strong. Keep faith, and you shall become whole again. Okay, I'll try. Hmm. You've saved me before, Fell. Do you know how I died? Ah. Fell does not respond for a moment, then slowly, menacingly, the symbol, three symbols materialize above his head, each of them casting a long shadow. Shadows. Shadows? The three symbols swirl about each other, each leaving a faint, black, misty trail about them. They take on a ragged edge, like teeth and talons, and multiply. Where there were three, there is nine. Nine become twenty-seven until the room is a swarm of shadows. Many shadows. They strained from the darkness, swarmed you, then left you to die. Why? The shadow symbols swirl into one, then dissolve, to be replaced with a single symbol. I do not know. Thanks for that. What good are you, buddy? Uh, let's see, what tattoos does he have? Whew. Ooh, increase my spell memorization capacity. First level, second level, and plus one to intelligence. Tattoo of the Sensates. Sensory touch ability. Crumble to dust. This one's grayed out. Oh, thieves. Okay. Unbroken circle. Oh, good old Zerthamon. Limited number of uses. Also, limited number. Hmm. Tattoo of Anna. Plus one. Huh. Deucing my charisma. 
Tattoo of Saving Grace. Huh. Tattoo of Ignis. Tattoo of the Skull. Special Temporary. Bonus to Charisma. There's seriously a lot of these things. Plus two to intelligence. Boost to dexterity. Greater presence. Charisma. Plus three base hit points. Armor. Boost Taco, I'm not gonna need it. Plus one damage to all attacks. Insight, okay, intelligence. Charisma, okay. Uh, pinpoint, inflict more damage. Takes more damage from physical attacks. I don't like that. What was the bone signer? Hold undead. You've learned to speak of the dead and hear their stories. Uh huh. Oh, also. Let us take the tattoo of the art. Nice. So... Missile of Patient. Fist of Iron. Hmm. Do not know what that'll do. Thirty seconds. Mm. Kind of rather just do direct damage. Oh, we can always just go for another magic miss. Pardon. Acid damage. Sure. Okay. Looks good. Quick save. Um done. Whoops. Ignis. What other dialogue options do I have? How about with yes. Grace here. Uh, companions. Let's see, what does she have to say about Ignis? Huh. You'd be wise to travel with him no longer. He is insane, and he has proven capable of great acts of destruction. As I understand it, he was transformed into a conduit to the elemental plane of fire. Such a transformation would have killed many mortals. Not only did he survive such a trial, but he thrived. He possesses tremendous power. Should he be forced into a confrontation, I would fear for the chances of anyone who stood against him. I pray it does not come to that. If Ignis is so powerful, why doesn't he just attack everything he sees? Why does he even travel with us? I do not know. But I do not think it is because he likes our company. In fact, I think he considers considers us all all of us irrelevant except for you. Me? Why me? Again, I do not know. Still, have you noticed that when you ask him to do something, 
he obeys without question. Were I to make the same request, the last thing I would receive would be his compliance. Hmm. More to you, me. See if she can say something new about herself. Huh. Thoughts on my situation. I think we've gone through all of these before. Uh, I guess we could talk to Ignis. Yes. Oh yeah, the, the suffering. Yeah, can't do anything. Never mind. Alright, let's get out of here. Oh, nice, it's daylight. Alright. I'm gone. Okay. Alright. I'm gone. Hive dweller. Does this thing say anything? Hmm. This black scaled reptile towers to a height of eight feet. Its great height, however, is offset by its thin snake like frame. A long prehensile tail drags behind it, and its leathery wings are hooked behind its back. A strong, vinegary smell emanates from the creature, as well as a certain amount of heat seems to be ignoring you. Well, hello. Whoa, chief. Morty cuts in before you can speak to the creature. Bar that, you don't want to be rattling your bone box with any fiend on the street. Leave be. Yeah, leave it alone, alright. You know, fiendling, you're alright. Well, if you weren't being such a banshee all the time. <laughs> and if you weren't yourself all the time, you might be a fine skull too. <laughs> I think I'm in love. <laughs> you too. What would I do without you? Bean cinder. Ugh. Here. All right. Ingress. Oh, there. Oh, Ingress watches you warily as you approach. Kundri Ung. No, I'm not Kundrian. He should be along to help you at any time now. I'll meet him back at the Smoldering Corpse Bar and see how things turn out. Be strong. Done. What happened? Done. Actually, let's quickly make our way back there and... Actually, I probably didn't need to do that. I could have just exited out anywhere and... Oh well. Alright, into the bar. Alright, now we just gotta find him. Oop. No. Ilquix. I'm gone. Hmm. Mercy killer? Alright. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Ah. 
Condrian stands as you approach him. The Tooth Woman wanted you to have these, he says, holding out his hand. She wanted to express her thanks, even out the balance book as it were, and be done with the damn things. In the palm of his hands are Ingress's dancing teeth, and he smoothly deposits them into your hand. Enjoy them, Seeker. Hmm. Updated my journal. Oh, thank goodness I finally completed another quest. Forget it. He gave me some teeth? This is a handful of Ingress's living teeth. Apparently they didn't want to go with her back through the portal to her home plane. They rattle amongst themselves whenever they are held close. They remind you of a bunch of creepy ivory hopping bugs. Okay, use. You examine Ingress's teeth. You can't shake the resemblance to ivory bugs. You get the feeling that they are looking at you expectantly, awaiting some command. Hey, Morty, come here a minute. Morty floats over. What's the chant, Chief? You see these teeth? Morty glances at your palm. Yeah. He seems morbidly fascinated. Ugly little burks, aren't they? Do you think you could use them somehow? As a weapon, maybe? Bar that, Morty shudders. Would you want those things in you? <laughs> Grab Morty and show the teeth in his mouth. Come on, Morty. They seem to like you. Look, look at the way they're staring at you. Those little pikers better not come anywhere near me, or I'll... Morty pauses. You know, I have no idea how to threaten teeth. Well, alright. I'm not gonna force... Uh... What's wrong? Morty floats in closer and glances at your palm. Hey, they look like they're planning something, don't they? They sure do, don't the... What happens next is difficult to describe, and painful to watch. Faster than you can close your palm, the teeth hop out of your hand and swarm onto Morty's jaw. Morty howls as Ingress's teeth promptly rip out his old teeth and then jump into the exposed cavities. Morty! Morty continues howling. <laughs> howling. The teeth settle in, adjusting themselves and planting their roots with a horrid drilling noise. Morty, you okay? Morty doesn't seem to hear you. He keeps howling and howling, then suddenly starts smashing his teeth together. He gets in three powerful bites before the upper and lower teeth lock together and prevent him from opening his mouth. Wow. Morty mumbles something at you, his eyes wide. How can his eyes be wide? They're always wide. Well, I'm... No, I guess he does have eyeballs. Morty, are you okay? The teeth suddenly unlock and Morty takes a deep breath. I will kill you for this. You plan that, I know it. Look, I didn't mean that to happen. I even warned you. Uh, how do they feel? Morty moves his jaw around experimentally. Odd, but not bad. Suddenly the teeth extend into fangs. Ooh, they change. They shrink down to normal, then fangs again, then normal. I think I'm going to like these. I'm sorry, Morty. I didn't mean you any harm. Oh, I'll still get you for this, Morty replies. He grins. His teeth turn into fangs again. Just you wait. Uh, revenge never helped anyone, Morty. Uh, let's go. You turn around and to go on your way. When you suddenly hear Morty let loose with another howl of pain. Uh, no, what happened now? You turn to face Morty again, only to see the teeth finish ripping themselves loose from his mouth and leap back towards you. You catch them easily. Morty, still grumbling, groans painfully. I don't know. It seemed like everything was fine there for a minute, 
but then they ripped themselves out again. The teeth grouped themselves in your hand in a way so as to somehow face Morty and then clack twice at him fiercely. Hmm. I'm thinking they're angry with you, Morty. Oh, I see. Uh, wait, what? They're mad at me? Why? Well, you did just insult them, remember? Ugly little Burks, little pikers. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Come on, Chief, give them back. Wait, you want them now? Can I assume your vow of revenge against me has been tabled? Morty looks annoyed. Well, it's just that they might be, you know, useful. Morty tries to ignore your grin. Alright, yes, I retract my vow of hideous revenge against you. You're one lucky sod, too, my dad. It would have been horrifying. Happy? Can I have them back now? Alrighty then, here you go, little buddy. As you move to hand them back to Morty, the teeth crawl up your arm until they arrive at your shoulder chittering and occasionally clacking angrily at Morty. Hmm. I don't think they're going to be happy until they get an apology, Morty. I know. I didn't hear you right, boss. I think they did what they did to make a point, Morty. But now that it's made, well, you did taunt them. And we know how good you are at that. Sometimes there's a price, you know. Morty sighs. It's time like this... I really miss having eyelids, so we can close them and count to ten. He pauses. <sighs> All right, teeth. I'm... I'm... Wait. No. Sod that. I can't do it. There's only so much a skull can take. I'm not going to give an apology to a bunch of ugly, yellowed, rotting teeth. Uh-oh. The teeth chatter with an outrage for a while and then clack sharply twice more at Morty before settling down. You're not sure how you can tell that they're sulking, but you pretty, you're pretty sure that's what they're doing. Well, all right, Morty, if you insist, I'll just put these powerful, in, powerful enchanted shape-changing teeth. That, by the way, I suspect are capable of learning and will grow more powerful and magical as you do in this pouch here. You let me know when you change your mind. Anna, who has remained surprisingly silent throughout all of this, finally breaks down. She starts laughing uncontrollably, tears streaming from her eyes. Leaning against a nearby wall and howling, her tail lashing back and forth with each new eruption of laughter. Morty winces painfully. Boss, this may be the most humiliating moment of my entire career as a nimmer. We all have our torments, Morty. Looks like today is yours. Well, Morty grunts. Gah! All right, all right, all right. Morty appears to steal himself and says, Teeth, I'm sorry, really? You're no uglier than any other enchanted by cuspids I've ever encountered before. You're as nice a shade of yellow as you really can go on teeth. And the rotting crack was totally out of line. I hereby tender my apologies and offer to make amends. All right. Yeah, actually, that wasn't that bad. Better than I expected. Anyway, what do you say, Teeth? The teeth chitter for a bit, almost as if they are considering it. After a while, they turn to face Morty and clack once, then settle down comfortably in your shoulder. I think they're satisfied, Morty. I think they're leaving it up to me as to when and whether or not to equip you with them. Anna's laughter finally subsides to a normal level. Hoy, Skull, I have to say, I didn't think it was possible, but something's happened that finally made putting up with your bobbering and chattering worth the while it has. She wipes the tears from her eyes and gives one last delighted chuckle. Morty sighs, fine, fine, whatever, you're the boss. I'll be over here nursing what's left of my ego back to health. Can we go now? Let's. Okay, cool. Ooh. The teeth may gain new options and ability as Morty goes up in levels. Sweet. 
use it. Huh, you examine Ingress's teeth. I want you to do piercing damage. I want you to become a magical weapon. Sure, let's make him a magical weapon. The teeth rattle about wildly, then suddenly settle down. After a brief moment, they begin to emit a soft magical glow. All done! Yay! Okay, let's give them to Morty. <laughs> Drop that crap. Sure. Cool. There you go, Morty. All right, guys. We're we've gone way over time for this episode, so I'm gonna put an end here. Um, thanks for watching, and next time we're gonna be doing who knows what. <laughs> some at some point, I gotta continue the main story. We gotta figure out how to find Ravel and get the ball rolling. We'll see. You guys have a good night, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.